So let's start with a basic example of just adhering to some of the language standards that you would expect in JavaScript. Typically, when you have a variable like count here, if it's in all uppercase, we're expecting this to be a constant. Typically, it's just going to be an imported constant at that. But here, it's not following camel case. Now, some of your linters may catch this, but it's important to know what your standards are in your language of choice and to follow them. The reason is it's more readable. Pretty straightforward. Now, as we're looking at this, we don't actually ever go and reassign the value. Again, your linter may catch this, but this would typically be a const. But is it even actually fully correct? Do we actually even do anything with it? No, not really. We can probably just eliminate this and change some of our logic. And then by doing that, maybe we can actually go and see if there's a better name that we can go and update items with. Now, let's see. So if count being equal to zero here. And again, this, this method, it's not really important what the method does. We're trying to adhere to standards, right? Who who really cares what it does? Hmm. So is i less than them? And we've eliminated that. But then you see here on line seven with our variables that we're sort of modifying our original input. Usually not the best standard. So what would be actually a good name here? Well, what about total multiplications? And we simply start it by initializing it equal to the number. That's what we're doing here. We're trying to get fact the factorial total and we go ahead and change this number to total multiplications but don't always settle on your first name think about it for a second your variable names are going to be something that is going to be the most descriptive item in your application it's oftentimes going to replace comments which you'll see later on in this course so maybe factorial total would be the best name and now, by having our factorial total, we know exactly what the objective here for factorial total is. And we have created something that follows the JavaScript standard, but really the variable naming convention standard. So that's a little bit more descriptive. So let's move on to descriptive names.js. And I want to give you an example, a very basic one, of the significant other test, as I call it. Now, before my girlfriend left me, I would have had her chime in on this and it would have been very funny. So I will do my best acting. Hey, baby, what do you think a variable D stands for? Don't be gross, Dylan. I was like, all right, well, what do you think a variable today's date stands for? Well, clearly it stands for today's date. Now, in this case, it's kind of silly, right? Because it's such a small function, but you get the idea. We've now eliminated something that may be lost in context. Now, we'll talk more about short distance variable naming and long distance variable naming later on, but let's look at a more realistic example now.